we want to talk about some of the major endorsements you have in this race because you have picked up a lot of support in a short amount of time. Most recently, one of the most coveted endorsements in the nation from our former president, and some would say he's still my president. And soon to be president. president. Donald J. Trump. Tell us a story about how you got President Trump's endorsement. Wow. Well, thank you for bringing that up. I am thrilled to have that endorsement. Um, just beyond thrilled about it. You know, uh, President Trump is such a great fighter for the state of Alaska. And one of the things I want to, to say for everybody that's listening, you know, the governor will tell you that anytime he's spoken with President Trump, the president has always said, what can I do for Alaska? He didn't wait to be asked. He said, what can I do for Alaska? And I love that about him. And, and um, and I respect and admire that he he has made it a point to know so much about our state and what's important. Um, and I'm so happy that he weighed in on this race because he, like us, know what's at stake here, um, not only in our state, but in our country. And I believe that he feels the same way that I do. And I know you two do and that our country, we are kind of at a crossroads and we have got to get our country back. And it's essential that we have President Trump back in the presidency. And I, he knows that I'm a fighter. He's aware of my background. He knows what I have done. He knows some of the battles I've fought in the legislature. He knows I can stand strong when the winds are blowing very tough and, uh, and, and strong and blowing the other trees down. He knows that, that I can stand strong and I've proven that. Um, you know, the conversations that he had with Speaker Johnson. Um, Speaker Johnson was able to talk with him a lot about um, the conversations that we've had and the in-person meetings. Um, uh, Congressman uh, Steve Scalise, who is a big lover of Alaska, has been a wonderful friend and supporter to me right from the get-go. And I know that he talked to the president. Um, Congresswoman uh, uh, Stefanik has been an incredible supporter and just given me many, many tips and been so supportive of this race. And she also loves Alaska. Um, I, they know the type of fighters that we need. Um, I've been thrilled to have the endorsement of Congressman Emmer, who his tie to Alaska is that he went to college on a hockey scholarship in Fairbanks. And so spent four years within our state and is also good friends with our Senator Dan Sullivan. And so he's been, been here quite a few times, knows what's important to us, and will always defend Alaska. He, he's been just incredible, but um, thankful for their endorsements. And, and Chairman Hudson, who's the chair of the Congressional Leadership Fund, has been wonderful. Um, win winning for Women, which is an organization that helps to get conservative women um, into office in D.C., have been very supportive and financially very helpful. So, I'm grateful for all of those. Um, the donations have been coming from lots of very good, strong Republican people who I'm so impressed with what they say about Alaska to me and how they know how important it, we are to the country. Not only the resources that we were talking about earlier that are um, bound up and, and locked up, but also the important position that we play in national security, how close we are to all these other nations and being, um, you know, the, so close airways and everything that we have everything that another country would want in this in this state. And we know full well the biggest regret Russia's ever had was selling us. And um, they wish they could take us back. And of course, with that we say hey good luck give it a try but <laughs> it's not going to happen right um, we're not giving up alaska but um we we just have so many things going for us and it's why i think the support of so many in dc has has been there because they know the whole country benefits from our state did you have a chance to talk to president trump yourself yet no i have not talked to him personally yet well, that'll be an exciting day when you do. I agree with you that he has been so supportive of Alaska, and I think it's huge that he has jumped in and had an opinion about this race because it puts this race on the map nationally and will bring a lot of attention to to having a, a decisive victory for Republicans. I think that that's a big deal. 
I, yeah. I agree with you. I think being on the map even more than we were is just critical. And um, we all know that it takes money to run a campaign. That's right. Nothing in this, I'm going to call it industry of campaigning, is free, nor is it inexpensive. And so I am always on the phone and asking people for donations and um, letting them know what I stand for so they know what their money is going to be supporting. But it's just, it's a part of the territory that comes with this. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of uh, the need for the help, the helpfulness of endorsements, and of course, uh, the need for money and getting this this race more on the, the national uh, forefront, uh, what do you see as the the path to victory uh, for us in this particular race uh, to unseat uh, Mary Paltola and get back the seat that Don Young, Don Young ha held for so long? Well, you know, in our state, we have ranked choice voting that was put into the law. It, it barely won, and it was challenged in court, and the court said, hey, this is the way it is, and so we've been living with that. So what I like to equate it to is a game. That's the game we're playing right now. And we have to play by the rules. And the rules with ranked choice voting are that people pick their first choice and then they rank. Now, what Republicans need to remember is don't rank any Democrats, rank the Republicans. And um, if we do that, and if every, if I wanna earn people's vote and I want people to vote for me, and I'm happy to answer any questions or you know, anything that they have for me, but I also want them to vote for the other Republican who's running as number two. And I tell everyone, if you are voting for the other Republican, great, vote for me number two. That's how we're gonna win this. That is how we're going to have a Republican, a conservative Republican in Congress and our state will be represented better and our country will be in better hands. So, the, you know, moving forward, I am delivering that message everywhere I go. Um, and there's no fighting and no fussing uh, because I'm running against Peltola and Biden. And that's where every dollar and every cent and every bit of energy that I have is going. And that's, you know, that 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 strikes me is, as that that's the path. We have to rank the red. Uh, how there there is still a certain margin of voters who are either skeptical of ranked choice voting um, or may refuse to vote because they don't like ranked choice voting or may refuse to or might say, I don't want to rank because I am just in principle against ranked choice voting. And, you know, that two or three percent of folks who might decide not to do that could make a difference. What's your what do you say to those folks? How do we convince them to say, you know what, we understand uh, to your point, like you said, this is the system that we have. This is the these are the cards that we've been dealt. We've got to work within the rules. How do we convince them to to move forward and just rank the red? Because at the end of the day, we this gaining that seat back is what's most important. How do we get them to move on so, that? So I have heard that comment from you know a few people, and and some people just feel like they're almost doing something morally wrong. Mark to mark two. I mean. Pretty much that's what they've said to me. I try and explain it to them, um, and, and it concerns me a lot. Um, I, I'll just keep, I'm gonna keep on trying. We're getting education out to folks. I know that Division of Elections is continuing to put education out in written form, and there will be uh, things coming out on the airways to try to help people. Um, there's only one reliable place to get information about where to vote and uh, explaining ranked choice voting, and that is the Alaska Division of Elections, and that's being advertised statewide. So, you know, I refer people there all the time. Um, if people say they're only voting for one, I ask them to please reconsider and to please think about it. I make sure that they have all my contact information and uh, know they can can contact me with any additional questions. And then I say, and if you're only voting for one, please let it be me because I will represent you the best. And here's why. Um, everybody has a different, uh, you know, point, something that's super important to them. And I try to explain to them where I stand on that so they know why it's in their best interest, you know, to vote for me. 
Um, you know, I'm going to say uh, the other Republican who is running has said they're dropping out if they come in third. And before you even ask me, I'm going to tell you that I have not made that statement, nor am I going to make that statement. What I have said is, let's see how all the votes shake out on August 20th. And if there's ever any questions, then I will call Nick and I will call the party chair and let's sit down and let's talk about this and see what path do we have to move forward to have a Republican in Congress representing Alaska. That's what this whole thing is about. This isn't about me. This is about Alaska. This is the picture of the whole. This isn't just about one person or a couple people. And so I am looking at this as the whole and the big picture and what's best for Alaska.